And as we know, the thinner skeleton was explained were very, very clever men. They dispensed justice, they made sure the land worked, and everything sorted, and were great, great men. And also, when time was needed, they were also deeply and devoutly, psychotically violent. And it was one of these men was named Oshi, as we just heard. And Oshi was as clever and as handsome and as beautiful and as poetic and as deeply psychotically violent as any <laughs> of the other female. But there was something different about Oshi. As you can imagine, if your mother was a deer, it would be slightly different. And he'd be the kind of girl, he'd be out there in a bit of warfare. You know, you'd see a girl air screen any time. Out there for a bit of warfare. I'd be out there with his axe. And all his friends would be out with their axes and be fighting, and be hewing, and be limbs and blood and things squishing all over the place. And rah! And Oshi would take his axe and he'd be smashing some poor fella's skull, and he'd be bending his skull, and Oshi would go rah! And then he'd stop. For he'd hear a little bug twitching in a tree, and he'd say, Excuse me? And he'd take a bit of parchment and a bit of fell and some ink, and he'd write a couple of lines of poetry. <laughs> <laughs> And my father has been the king to know for de decades and decades and decades. 
And the one day he was always frightened about it is he would lose his throat. And one day he said to his druid, Druid, will there ever come a day where I'll come into my great chamber and find another man sitting on my throne? And the druid said to me, said to my father, said, No, 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 you did not worry. The only man who could steal your throne is the one who married your beautiful daughter. And he looked over at me there. And then I stood and I wore the beautiful she had beautiful golden hair. And I looked at my father, my father looked at me, and he looked at the druid, and then he grabbed the druid stick and he ran over to me and he grabbed the stick. And I could feel it happen. I could feel a terrible change coming on me. And everybody in the chamber gasped and we all stepped aside. And I ran and ran down to my own room and I looked in my mirror and my face, my beautiful, beautiful face, and turned to the face of a pig. And just then the druid came into me and he was so apologetic and said, Sorry, me, sorry, sorry this happened. I said to him, well change me back, you're a druid, change me back. And the druid said, I can't. Your father's a king, he's far more magic than I have. He said, nothing I can do, there's no way I can return to my beautiful self. And the druid looked at me and said, there's only one thing we can do. If you can get to Ireland and find Oshi and get him to marry you, then you will change back into your beautiful self. And that, Oshi, is why I'm here today singing songs to you. And all she would be the man he was, kind of looked at the body, ignored the face, and thought, Grand so. <laughs> Let's do her marrying. And so the tune was off, the dress was off, and they laid down, and they married. And they married all morning, they married all afternoon, and they married on to the dusk. <laughs> and as the ecstasy of the marriage filled the woman, she cried out, and as she cried out, her face changed again, and she turned into the most beautiful and dazzling woman that ever was. And all she lay there beside her, and looked at her, and she looked at her, and thought, ah, Jesus, I and he looked and said, Oh, she, now I must do something for you. Let me take you to my father's kingdom, and I will show you beauty and wonder you'll never imagine. And so she caught up her great white horse, and she went onto the horse, and oh, she went onto the back of the horse, and the horse began galloping. And it galloped all the way across the west of the island, and it came to the Atlantic, and it jumped into the waves, and poor Oh, she was thinking, Oh, my God, and the horse landed on top of the waves, it didn't sink. It ran on top of the waves, and it ran all the way out and all the way out, and eventually it came to that land that exists beyond time and beyond geography. The land he took the moon. And Oshi was amazed. When he got there, it was the most beautiful country he had ever seen. He could not imagine anywhere more beautiful. The sky of Chernobyl, it was like if you can imagine the sky of Connemara when it's been raining for weeks and weeks and weeks and then the rain stops and suddenly the sky is a beautiful, beautiful, clear blue. That was the sky there every day. And there was flowers there, huge red flowers and huge yellow flowers. And from the flowers came big puffs of pollen, like gold and clouds in the air. And every day Oshi walked around and he breathed in and he tasted all the sounds and the smells and the beauty of the landscape. And every night he went to his wife's chamber and he touched and he felt and he breathed the beauty of me. And the years went by and the years went by and Oshi was very content. But slowly he began to have a little regret in his heart because he missed his own family, he missed his father and he missed his son Oscar. And of course he missed his fellow warriors. And one day he said to me, he said, Nee, I need to go home. I need to see my own people again. And he looked up and said, Oshi, Oshi, you cannot go back. Ireland has changed. And he looked and said, No, Ni, you don't understand. I, I miss my family so. I miss my father, Finn. I miss my son, Oscar. I miss all the great warriors. And she said, Oshi, trust me, you cannot go back. If you go back, you'll never come back to me. And Oshi looked to his wife and said, Ni, you have to understand. But the pain in my heart from missing my family is so great, I fear that my heart will break. And if my heart breaks, how can I love you? And he looked at her and she knew this was the truth. And she said, Oh, Sheena, I'll tell you this. You can go home. But you must do what I tell you. I will give you my great white horse. You must sit on my horse. The horse will take you back to Ireland. But you must stay on my horse. You must never put one foot on the soil of Ireland. For if you do, Oshi, you and I will never, ever meet again. And Oshi looked at his wife and said, Don't fear, don't fear, I'll be okay. And he got on the great white horse, and the white horse leapt on the waves and ran across the waves and got to Ireland. And Oshi <coughs> sat on the horse and he came to the west round and, and it seemed to him that Ireland had changed. It seemed to be 
small and dull and just something just not quite right. And so he got the horse and he knew there was a place he had to go. He steered the horse through some valleys and he came to a great field. And the field was a great boulder. And he took the horse up to it and as he got near the boulder, he saw a farmer. The farmer with his cattle. And he said to the farmer, my good man, could you do me a favour and lift that boulder for me? And the farmer looked at him and he looked at the size of the boulder and he said, um, I'm a farmer. I have a back sore enough with the cattle. You can lift the boulder yourself. And oh, she went, grandson. And he bent down, he held onto the horse very carefully, he scooped up the huge boulder with one hand and he threw it into the air. And the farmer, <gasps> and then he went to the farmer and said, Farmer, in the hole there you see a great war horn. Could you bring it out for me? And the farmer looked down, and sure there was a great war horn there made of gold and silver. And the farmer said, Ah, no fear. I can feel the magic coming off that horn. There's no way I'm touching it. I'll tell you not to touch it either. And Ocean said, Ah, I'll get it myself. And he bent down. And he bent down to get the horn. As he bent the strap on the saddle, the horse snapped, and he fell with the horse, and he touched the soil of Ireland. And with that, the horse gave out a neigh and ran away, and Ocean lay down on the ground. And the instant he touched the ground, he felt it. He felt his body begin to change. He felt himself begin to weaken, and his muscles grow thinner, and his blood grow slower. And he felt himself, he looked at his hands, and his hands began to wrinkle, and he was holding them up, and it was the hands of an old man, and getting older, and older, and older. And then worse than that, his vision began to grow, until he was utterly blind. But this was Ocean. Ocean had fought many terrible battles, and had worse, worse things happened to him this. So he knew what to do. He reached out with one hand, and he felt, and he felt, and he caught the great war horn, and he pulled himself over to it, and he put his lips to the war horn, and he... He pulled up all his strength and he managed to get a little puff of air into the war horn. And the war horn recognised that the air came from a female warrior. And the war horn took that little puff of air and it amplified it and amplified it and amplified it and then blasted it out in a huge, huge blast that shook the trees. And Ocean lay there and he lay and he waited and he waited and no Fina came to rest. And he lay there, utterly When the farmer who'd seen all this was now shaken in absolute fear, thinking, Jesus. And he ran away to get a wise man. And he got a wise man, he brought the wise man, the wise man came to the field, and he saw this strange form, the wrinkled old man lying on the ground, said the great war horn. And he bent down and said, Who are you? And the final man there said, I am Ocean. I am the son of Finn Cool. I am a fan of Oscar. I am one of the great Fina. And the wise man looked down and said, Fina? Fina? Sure, I think I've heard of them. I think that they're mentioned in jumping stories somewhere, but it's not true that Fina never existed. And the old form lender said, If I, for one minute, had my form back again, I would show you that the Fina were real. And the wise man looked at him and said, Well, let me tell you something. My name is Patrick, and I have come to Ireland to bring Christianity. And every night I build a church, and every night a great monster comes and destroys my church. So if you truly are who you say you are, I will give you your power back if you promise to defend my church. And Ocean said, I have defended Ireland so many times. I have been proved to defend it once more. And so Patrick bent over and he blessed Ocean. And as he touched him, Ocean felt it. His blood began to quicken again and his heart began to beat. And his eyesight came back to him and he looked and he could see the muscles swell up in his hand. And Patrick stepped back. For the wrinkled shape swelled out until there was a giant of a youth lying there. And the youth stood up and he took his sword up and he said, Take me to your church. So they walked all the day. And he got to the church just as night was coming on. And Patrick left Ocean in front of his church. And Ocean stood there with his sword, and Patrick went away. In the middle of the night, Ocean heard it. <sighs> a huge bellowing noise. And he looked up, and in the distance he saw two red eyes, far up in the air. And the red eyes bent nearer and nearer. And then he saw the shape of 
of a giant bull, 20 feet high, with horns that scraped the bottom of the stars. And the bull looked at him, and the bull began to bellow, and began to kick the ground, and it bent down, and it pointed its horns straight at Oshin, and began running at him. And Oshin took out his sword. And so began the very last battle ever fought in Ireland by a member of the field. Oshin and the bull, they fought all night long. And it was such a huge battle, full of hell that there was an earthquake. Sometimes the bull would get the bed of Oshin and toss him, and when it landed on the ground, a huge glen would come up. Sometimes Oshin would toss the bull and the bull, and it would hit a mountain and the mountain would break. And all night they roared, they fought, and the sparks was like lightning in the sky. And when the morning came up, the bull was getting tired, and they decided to try one last time to kill Oshin, but it was now about rocking its feet as it came near to Oshin. Oshin saw it one, one second to actually do what he had to do, and he took his sword and plunged it into the heart of the bull. And the bull fell. <coughs> when it hit the ground, an earth shook. And then Oshin, being the man he was, was quite happy. He looked at the dead creature and he gave out a great roar. <laughs> And the roar of all the island. And Patrick, who was many, many miles away, heard it and thought, oh. <laughs> and he came running, and by the time he got there, sure, there was a big dead creature, and there was Oshin, lying in the heather, sleeping, like a baby, quite content. <laughs> and Patrick looked down, and he saw the giant figure of the man, and he saw the giant dead bull, and he thought, ah, oh, no way can a power like this ever come back into Ireland. And so as Oshin slept, Patrick bent over and he took his blessing from him. And Oshin felt it. And his dreams, he felt something change and he opened his eyes. And he could feel it happen again, all the strength coming from him. And he looked at his hands and began to wrinkle again the old and older. And then the eyesight was coming from him and he was beginning to go blind. And suddenly he could feel himself, he could feel himself beginning to die. And as he lay there dying, he said, I am Oshin. I am the son of young and cool. I, my father, was him. And he began to speak, and he kept speaking. And Patrick was so amazed at the things that Ocean was telling him, they called for a scribe. And a scribe began to write down all the marvelous things that Ocean was talking about, all the great battles of the, the Fina, the great men, the great women, all the Fina and Kill, the Bronya, and Dermot, and Dermot, the Sorrows, all these marvelous of things. And so it was that Ocean turned out the greatest achievement ever done by any Fina. For with his dying breath, he made sure that all the glory and the power and the beauty of the Fina would live on and on and on to the very end of eternity itself.